Hi my angels and welcome back to my channel. So if you've not guessed by the title of this video, today's video is gonna be a full face of using Charlotte Tilbury products. So before I get into the video itself, the reason why I wanted to film this video was A, because I had a lot of requests to do a full face of Charlotte Tilbury. And this is back in the day when I used to do full face of like one branded makeup videos and like it was like a thing back then. So I had a lot of Charlotte Tilbury requests and usually when I wear quite a lot of her stuff because I do really enjoy using her products, um, I do have a lot of people like messaging me saying, can you just do a full face so we can see what you like and what looks good. So that was one of the reasons. And the other one being, I did a meetup with the Charlotte Tilbury team and Selfridges in Birmingham a few years ago. And I wore a full face of Charlotte Tilbury there. And I kid you not, in the pictures, my like whole makeup and my face just looked like so glam, but like so natural at the same time. I'll try and see if I've got a picture and I'll try and insert it into the screen. If not, there'll definitely be a link in the info box below where I've posted some pictures on Instagram where I've worn a full face of her products. And I just love the way it photographs. And I kind of thought that those two reasons are a good reason to sit down and film this video. So I have got everything laid out on my table right next to me. And we're gonna basically crack straight on and get all this makeup on my face. Not all of it, I've got like a mixture of different things here, but I'm just gonna see what kind of makeup look this turns into. It's gonna be a very like Hollywood glowy kind of glam look because I kind of feel like all of her products create that kind of sultry like Hollywood vibe. So the first product I'm gonna go in with is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. I love this moisturizer. It's a very, very thick. Not everyone likes it, but I love using it as a primer and moisturizer. I still remember the first time I saved up my money to get this. I kind of felt sick, but amazing at the same time because it is a very expensive moisturizer, but I just love, love, love the way this makes my skin feel. And if this had SPF in it, I'd probably use it more like in the day when I'm not wearing any makeup. I just love the texture of it. I love the smell of it. Um, I actually used up my first entire pot that I bought years ago and I repurchased it like two other times. So I actually, I'm a huge fan of this moisturizer. Okay, so I just read the back of this and it says that there is an SPF of 15 in it, so that's fab. I love me a good SPF. I wish it was a little bit higher that I could wear like just throughout the day, but very good. So I actually have this under eye corrector, which is in the shade medium two. So I thought I'd give this a go. It's kind of like a creamy texture and I thought it'd be a good kind of time to test this bad boy out. It's very, very light. Me likey that so far. I've been getting a little bit of darkness like right here in my eyes. So I'm gonna pull it up into that as well. Okay, I love how lightweight it is. It literally feels like I'm not wearing anything on my face. So, so good so far. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eye now. I've got some marks on my face from some under the skin spots. I hate those, but I always get them when I eat really bad and it was Diwali recently and I just ate just loads of bad food. So we are gonna cover these guys up as well. So these ones are quite dark on my skin and it didn't really correct them very well, but I do love how light it is and on the under eyes, I feel like it worked really well, so. That's under eye corrector done. I've got two like pre-base products that I've got here. I've got the Wonder Glow, which I love. I love mixing this into my foundation. And I also have the Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is in the shade number four. And this is in like the just original shade. This I feel like it just gives like a really nice glow to the skin, whereas this kind of gives a bit more coverage. I think I'm just gonna do half and half on each face so you guys can see what it looks like. We'll get the Hollywood Flawless Filter onto this side. Gonna make sure that's nice and blended out. And then I'm gonna get the Wonder Glow on to this side of my face. And then I'm just gonna blend all of that away with my damp beauty blender as well. So if I look at both sides of my face, the Hollywood Flawless Filter side definitely has a lot more coverage than this side. And I feel like if I was having a really good skin day where I just wanted to kind of really not really wear much makeup, I would definitely go in with this. Bit of a concealer, bit of bronzer, Done. Um, but this side, however, with the Wonder Glow, um, is definitely more of a product to mix in with your foundation because this just gives your skin that glow without any kind of coverage. I genuinely like both of these for different reasons. Sometimes I mix this one in with foundation, but um, I've never really worn it alone. 
and I actually really 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 like it I feel like this is definitely something that I would get in like a darker shade and take with me on holiday because on holiday I always feel like I never want to wear any like makeup but yeah I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of a close-up of what the two sides look like I'm just going to add a little bit more of this Hollywood flawless filter to this side just so that everything looks nice and even Okay, now we're gonna go on to foundation. I've got the Airbrush Flawless Foundation here. I've got it in two shades. This is 7.5 Neutral, and this is 8 Cool Freud. I feel like this one's gonna be too yellow for me, um, and this one might be okay. So I'm gonna go in with this one first, and then we'll see if I need to add this one on top. Honestly, if I had a penny for every single time, if someone asked me what I thought of this foundation, and the amount of times I'm like, I've never tried it before. So we're gonna try it together on the screen today. So I'm gonna get some pumps of this. This is a brand new one, so, oh, there we go. I'm gonna do, We'll do three pumps. I feel like they came out a little bit splodgy. And I'm actually using the Fenty Beauty Sponge. I'm back in love with this. Um, and we're just going to get this onto our face and see what it looks like. So this foundation definitely feels super duper lightweight on the skin. And that's even after putting the Magic Cream on, which is quite a thick moisturizer, which I really, really like. I feel like the older I've gotten, the less coverage I want to wear and like the less makeup I want to wear in general. But I'm really, really, really liking the finish of it. You can still see my pores through the center of my face, which I don't mind. I like skin to look like skin. I didn't think that the three pumps would actually carry on onto my forehead, but I feel like we got there and it wasn't that bad in the end. It was initially looking quite glowy when I put it on my skin, but I feel like it's definitely drying down to like a satin, like a really light satin finish. Very, very skin-like. But so far, I'm actually really liking the way that it's looking. I've obviously got this spot right here, which you can definitely see, um, but the flat ones that I had here have been covered up pretty well. I don't feel like there's much of a peekaboo showing through, so yeah. So far, I quite like that. Overall, I really like the look and feel and finish of this foundation and also the shade wasn't too bad either. I will show you guys a close up of the foundation as well so you can see exactly what it looks like on my skin. I realized I only have a one concealer from Charlotte Tilbury, which is this one right here. It's the Magic Away Concealer. It's in the shade seven. I generally like a brighter under eye, but we're gonna put this on and see how we go. So I have used this a couple times, but I feel like I didn't really carry on using it because it isn't like a brighter color. I definitely need to get it in a, a bit of a lighter color, but we're just gonna see how this looks underneath the eyes. It's a little bit lighter. It's a lot of a thicker consistency than the foundation, but we're just gonna roll with it. I'm gonna put it in the usual areas that I like to conceal, and I think I'm gonna add a little bit more onto this area here. It's very, very similar to the base color, but we're just gonna blend that out. And because it is a little bit more like thicker, I feel like it's got a little bit more coverage as well than the foundation. I know this is a full face of Charlotte Tilbury, but honestly, this sponge, you guys, is so good. I forgot how good it is. Like, I love me a good beauty blender, but there's something about this sponge. That concealer is actually really, really nice on the under eyes. It's definitely smoothed everything out. I do actually wish it was a little bit lighter in color, which is probably why I haven't used it, but I really, really like the finish of that. It's kind of got like a medium to full coverage going on underneath the eyes and it's blended in to the base really well. So far, I feel like I've loved everything that I've used. We're gonna keep on, okay, we're gonna keep on with the theme of things that I love from Charlotte Tilbury. And next up is the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. This is the pressed powder. I actually also have the loose powder version of this, but I really, really don't like it. I don't like the smell of it, whereas this one is beautiful. I have actually been using this for years. I've probably gone through like 17 of these. Like, I literally use them all the time. But we are going to get a little bit onto this brush. This is actually a travel size Charlotte Tilbury brush. And I'm just gonna start setting all the areas that we applied that concealer. I love how lightweight this powder is. I honestly use it in so many videos. I pretty much have used it non-stop in all my videos over the past like couple of years. I use this on my wedding day as well. And I love just how it kind of like mattifies my nose, but it keeps it like that throughout the whole day. Usually this kind of area can get quite oily, but I find with this powder, I don't really get that and you don't have to use a lot I love like pushing it into my skin but you really don't have to use 
that much a thin layer of this goes a very very long way and if you're wondering i use the shade fair um i am almost finished of this one i don't know what number this is but i do have another one in backup i always keep these powders actually in backup because i use them so much and again i'll just show you a quick close-up of what my skin is looking like now the concealer definitely is a lot more fuller coverage than the rest of the foundation in the base so it does look a lot um like heavier under the eyes. Now that the base is done, I am going to carry on with the cheeks and then we'll move on to eyes and lips. So for cheeks, I have two palettes. One of them is the Glowgasm palette here, which is in the shade Lovegasm. And then I've got this one here, which is the Glowing Pretty Skin palette. I'm not too sure which one to use. This one has a lot of color choice, but I feel like the shades in this are just speaking my name. So we're gonna go in with this and I'm gonna take the bronzer shade first and get that on to the usual areas that I like to bronze. So that's on my cheekbones, my hairline, and also my jawline. Scrap that, guys. Um, I actually forgot that I have my favorite contour wand here from Charlotte Tilbury. Whoa, it just got really, really sunny in here. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna get this on to the usual areas of my cheeks. Whoa, that's a lot, but it's okay. This blends up really nicely. So I'm gonna get this onto the usual areas. I love the way this blends into the skin. So we will definitely be able to blend everything out really nicely. So this product I've actually used a ton of times in a lot of my videos and also on my Instagram. It's actually a liquid contour that I absolutely love. I just love the way that it blends into the skin. And this actually works really well on any kind of base. And I just love that kind of cool tone effect it has. You can totally like leave the skin right here if you really wanted to. But we are going to go back in with that bronzer shade from the Glowgasm palette. And we're going to intensify the bronzer. One thing I've got to say, the texture of this bronzer isn't the best. It's almost like a weird, like creamy kind of texture. So I'm not really the biggest fan of this bronzer, I've got to say. I do feel like it's skipping in certain areas, which I am going over with the Beauty Blender just to kind of make sure everything's looking nice and blended in the skin. The blush shades in this palette are beautiful, but I actually want something a bit more matte. So I'm actually gonna take this blush right here. This is a very me color. It is the Cheek to Chic Swish and Pop Blusher, which is in the shade Sex on Fire. I love, love, love these kind of like mauve tones. I'm basically just gonna swivel my brush in here and pop it onto the apples of my cheeks. The blush is nice, but I feel like it's not as super duper duper pigmented as other blushes that I've tried. So for example, some of my favorite high-end blushes are the NARS blushes and the MAC blushes. But these, I've got to say, are very, very, very creamy. They kind of like blend into the skin really well. Uh, but this is what we are working with at the moment. And now I'm going to go on with highlight. I'm going to use this shade here in this Glow Gasm palette. Hopefully it's a different texture and it's a bit more um, powdery. I don't think it is that powdery. I think it's got that kind of like semi like creamy texture to it, but we are gonna get this onto the apples of our cheeks. I definitely had to work the highlight in. It is very, very creamy, but it's very like different texture. It's almost like a, a cream in the palette, but it's not as like easy to pick up like the Huda one. It is really beautiful though, like the tone of it is really, really nice, but it is a little bit difficult to get used to. I feel like these three shades right here would work really, really well using a beauty blender and kind of dabbing it onto the skin. But for me, I'm not too sure about this palette. I know it looks really, really, really beautiful, but um, I feel like the texture I just can't get used to. But I love the way that it looks like on my skin. Once you've actually got it on your face, it's actually really nice. The base is all completely done, and now we're gonna move on to eyes. Fun fact, I actually wore no eyeshadow on my wedding day, and I actually just used one of these, which is the Color Chameleon from Charlotte Tilbury. This one is in the shade Amethyst aphrodisiac and this is the exact shade that i used on my wedding and i literally just kind of like created a little bit of a wing and blended it out and that's literally all i did i didn't apply any other eyeshadows i just had this and these i find last really 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 well on the eyes for me i don't really need to wear an eyeshadow base with these i feel like they work pretty well on my lids but i don't know which shade to use i've got quite a few i at one point used to collect these Ugh. I know Amber Haze is one of my favorite, and then obviously the Amethyst one I wore on my wedding. Um, 
I'm gonna zoom you guys in very slightly. And I think I'm gonna go in with the shade Dark Pearl. We're gonna get this onto our eyeballs, like so. And then I'm just gonna make sure that the edges are blended out. I actually feel like uh, this eyeshadow matches my nails. <laughs> But uh, I added two layers of the color Chameleon on there. And this is a really nice like purpley gray tone, I wanna say. But this is what it's looking like on my eyes. So the palette I really, really want to dig into is this one right here, which is called the Starlight Palette. It's got some really gorgeous, like, shimmery shades in there. I kind of want to go in with this one here, which is, like, a gunmetal shade. And I find on the Instagram they do these really beautiful, like, shots of, like, this model sitting there. And they get this and they, like, rub it onto the eye. So I kind of want to do that. But I feel like I need to get something in the crease. And obviously this doesn't really have a crease color. So I'm actually going to go in with... I'm going to take that face palette and I'm going to use this bronzer here. And I'm going to get that into the crease just so that there's a nice transition going on between the shades. Now I'm gonna do that Instagram thing and I'm gonna take this shade right here and I've got it onto my finger and then I'm just going to swipe it. Oh yeah, that is stunning. It's kind of turned it into more of like a gun metal vibe. There's absolutely no fallout from any of these shadows which makes me very, very happy. But I'm just pressing this on to that area and then doing the exact same thing onto the other eye. Taking the Rock and Coal eyeliner in the black shade, I'm actually going to run this along the lash line and this is just going to help us smoke everything out a little bit more. This is definitely looking so much more smokier. And once we've got the mascara and brows and everything done, it's gonna all come together. I'm actually a huge, huge, huge fan of these Rock and Coal eye pencils. My favorite is the Nude Color. It is one of the best nude eyeliners I've ever used. But this is what we're working with at the moment. I think I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of that gunmetal shade and just make sure everything's nice and blended into each other. I feel like this eye is a little bit looking a bit different. There we go, it's better. Before I forget, I'm just gonna tight line my upper lash line. And I'm gonna apply that same brown we used in the crease onto the lower lash line. So for mascara, I'm gonna take some of the Legendary Lashes in volume two and get that onto both my upper lashes and also my lower lashes. I remember the first time I tried a Charlotte Tilbury mascara and I really did not like it. But this one definitely is adding a lot of volume and a lot of length to my lashes. And overall, I'm really liking the way that it's looking. I do feel that the consistency is a little bit on like, almost like a stickier, kind of thicker, texture which kind of takes a while to get used to but once you kind of figure out and really get into your lashes you can get a really nice look with it we're gonna move on to lips for lip liner i'm gonna use probably one of her most like famous famous products and that is the lip cheat lip liner in the shade pillow talk so i'm just gonna go ahead and line my lips and fill them in very slightly i love this color so much because you can really easily overline your lips if you really wanted to you can actually wear it by itself as well i believe this became such like a best selling product for her she came out with like a lipstick and a palette and just like so much stuff around the pillow talk kind of iconic lip liner and for me personally this is my favorite lip liner that she does and it's kind of one of my first ever like real high-end lip liners that I ever fell in love with um, but this is what it looks like on my lips and we are gonna go over the top with a liquid lipstick these are the Hollywood lips that she does and this one in particular is called Charlotte Darling I actually wore this for the first time when I did a meetup with Charlotte Tilbury years ago and I fell in love with like the color and the texture of it so we're gonna get this onto my lips it's got a really interesting like moussey texture but I love like how comfortable it feels on the lips 
but this has to be one of my favorite shades because it's really unique to like the other nudes that I typically wear. It's more of like a yellow nude, I wanna call it, but I love the texture of them. They're really, really moussey and really light. From what I remember, they also last really long as well. So this is the end of the full face of Charlotte Tilbury makeup look. I really hope you guys enjoyed the final look. It's got a really like cool tone, but still warm eye with this beautiful nude lip. If I had to give you guys my top three products from the Charlotte Tilbury range, then the first one would definitely, hands down, have to be the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I use this religiously and I genuinely, genuinely love it. I I actually have got my best friend also hooked onto this and she loves it. She's got quite an oily T-zone and oily skin and this is the one powder that keeps everything at bay for her. So this has to be my number one. Number two has to be the Hollywood Contour Wand. Again, I use this so often and I love, love, love this. I actually love a good liquid contour because it just means everything kind of blends into the skin really, really well. And then the third, so the third I've got to say has to be her eyeshadow products. I feel like Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palettes in general are so underrated they look so beautiful on the skin even if you're not very good at blending foundations out by the time you've got everything on your eyelids and you kind of smoke out your top lash line everything looks just so nice and put together and I feel like they're super super underrated and also the color chameleons as well so using those as your kind of like base as well as the shadows on top are just beautiful I actually have a couple of the long palettes that she does as well which are stunning but I feel like they're so hard to get a hold of because they just get sold out so quickly so if you guys ever come across any kind of her long palettes they are just they're brilliant and I would highly 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 recommend they are just as easy to blend out and beautiful on the skin um, and of course the color chameleons I mean I wore it on my wedding day and I think that kind of says it all products that I would probably like miss out on her cheek products are okay. I do like them. They are very creamy and easy to blend, but I feel like there's so many other great cheek products out there. Although this highlight looks really stunning right now, I feel like with me, if I wear a highlight, I kind of go hard or go home, and it doesn't quite like give me that intensity that I love off the bat. Um, so I'd probably give the cheek products a miss. Um, was there anything else that I didn't like? I genuinely just think it's like the cheek kind of like blushes, bronzers, highlights, that kind of vibe. I'm sure she's got some amazing stuff up her sleeve. Um, but yeah, considering I tried a lot of products out, I know a lot of them I love already. Um, it's just the cheek ones that didn't quite cut it for me. But other than that, I mean, the final result of this makeup look is beautiful. It's so like effortless glam. I think that's enough of me blabbering. I will put all my thoughts down below in the info box as well in case you want to read that. All the products that I've used will also be linked in the description box as well. I'm going to do one like full face of one brand video a month and I've already picked the one that I'm going to use for next month. So this one was high end, next month is going to be low end and I'm very excited. I think you guys are going to love it as well. And I think that's everything from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any favorites from Charlotte Tilbury, please leave them in the comments below because I'm sure other people from all over the world would love to know as well because that's what we're about. We're a two-way community. You guys can tell me your favorites. I can tell you guys my favorites and we can start a full-on conversation in the comments below. Please don't forget to follow me on my Instagram, which is just at Koshal. And that, I think, is genuinely the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you all in my next one. Bye!